Hello everyone, I'm Tops, aka Tasha. Welcome to Core Live. Today we're doing one of my favorite segments, which is our Core Creator Spotlights. Today I am joined by the incomparable, the wonderful, the artistic, Doc B Design. Pew, 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 pew. And... Hello everyone. Hello, what's this? A bonus creator we also have with us today, Fleshy Overlord. Fleshy Overlord, may I call you Fleshy? Yes, yeah, a lot of people do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both for joining me. Um, so today we're going to be diving into some of Doc's games on Core, and then we're going to be talking about his creation process. Um, so let's start off with uh, kind of a foundational question. Uh, Doc, what made you want to create games? I think, I, wow, that's that's a that's a great question to start off. Really loaded, of course, right? Um, but yep, I think basically your whole life story. Let's go. Yeah, I, I think everyone that plays games wants to create them in some sort, right? Like mm -hmm. everyone wants to, as as players, you want your input heard on the games that you like. Exactly. Um, and I grew up like I, I love art, and so. For me, playing games, it was always a dream. Like, I'd love to just like design a world, right? Or I'd love to just design, you know, weapon skins for some game. Or I'd love just to get my hands on any part of it um, would have been like really fun and a, a success to me, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I've I've always I guess it's it's been one of those things always in the back of my head. Never really knew how to do it, but core makes that possible right that's kind of the whole point Ah, uh, heck yeah okay you've always been uh very artistic and creative because uh you do watercolor and illustration correct yeah so i i've been doing 2d art pretty much my whole life like as long as i've been able to nice. hold you know paintbrushes and pencils and things i've been doodling on the sides of notebook paper <laughs> instead of paying attention in class and that sort of stuff right um, but yeah, I do, I do a lot of watercolor painting, I do a lot of oil painting, um, lots of graphic design work, so logo design, animation work, that sort of stuff. I do a little bit of, of all of it. Um, but yeah, coming coming from the 2D world into, into core is a lot different, obviously. Oh but, gosh. Um, yeah, like I, I, I still spend a lot of time in the 2D art world, still do watercolor painting um, about every other day. You know, still do digital painting quite often, so. Awesome. And perhaps this is the perfect opportunity to plug some of your other channels. So if you guys um, at any point during this stream are like, oh, this Doc character is fascinating and I would like to learn more about him, um, observe uh, the link tree URL above Doc's head should link to... <clears throat> can we check out your shop? So we can see some of your illustrations. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. Either, either the Etsy shop would be fine. Uh, there's yeah. there's more uh, there's more like merch on there. So there's like some hoodies and stuff, which might be so cool for some people to check my out. God, but... very talented. Okay, so later yeah, we're gonna have to. Some of the goods there. <laughs> we're some, gonna some of the good. Yeah, have to touch on exactly um, how approaching 2D design and 3D design is different. Uh, but before. Yeah we touch on that i would love to jump into your first game you made on core which is doc's death match so i'll cool. play here and guys if you're interested i'm going to be uh sending y'all a link in chat as well so can you tell me a little bit about uh kind of what this game uh what you do in this game for my first game, I just wanted it to be like something that I could play with my friends, right? Like that was the, that was sort of the allure of core to me. It was like, I could create a game to play with my buddies. Um, and it was sort of one of those things where like, hey, I can, I can make it however I want to, right? Like everything wrong with games that I've ever complained about, <laughs> I get to, you know, exactly. like make it the other way now. Um, and so on and so forth. So this is just a simple three-on-three -three team deathmatch game. There's two rotating maps in it right now. There's weapons that you can unlock as you get kills and level up. You press L to pull up the, the weapon shop and you can equip those as you level up. Um, so it, it has like kind of some basic like leveling foundations and some fun stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I wanted this game to be like a competitive three-on-three -three straight up shooting game because that's those are the games that i like to play um 
so i i didn't want to you know i didn't want to put like a ton of different weapons in the game you know i didn't want like rocket launchers and and stuff like that right i wanted it to be fairly simple um and straightforward so it's just the ar you can unlock skins for it and oh it's gosh. just it's just a game uh I'm like can i kill you while you're answering yeah my yeah questions? of course of course i've been there many of times on my own screen so. <laughs> I, I like to say too that this game is actually like a it's a great testament for core because this game is actually made off of the team deathmatch template oh my gosh um and it has like i said there's there's two maps so if we if uh maybe you and, and crossway boy can can team up and <laughs> kill me a whole bunch here and we can cycle over to the second map but it's it's really amazing what's possible just with the tools out of the box on core um like to be able to to take that team deathmatch yeah. template and make this out of it was a ton of fun. So, so this was your first game, and so did you do any scripting or coding, or was it all I, just changing the map? No. Oh my yeah, God. it was it was changing the map, changing the art. Um, I I was able to get a lot of really awesome stuff out of CC. Like nice. you'll see, whenever somebody dies, they blow up, right? Like that's one of my favorite little bits of the game: the little player explosions. The bones fly everywhere. That's just, it's a golden little egg that I found buried in CC somewhere. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, a lot of the stuff is just straight out of CC. Um, I did have, I had a lot of help from Insert Yourself actually on this oh, game. Nice. He coded the, he coded the weapon shop for me, which was super awesome. It was sort awesome. of like, I had all these weapon skins done and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do from here, like at all. Like, <laughs> like I, I have the art done, mm -hmm. um, and he kind of took it over. And like I said, like when you press L and start cycling through the guns there, like he, he built that little shop for us, um, right there. But even, even that shop itself is, is sort of a testament to CC. You'll see some of uh, Noob Dad Gamer's lights, or the, or like the lights on the border there. Oh, nice. Sort of highlighting everything. So yeah, this game is. Uh, it's really a uh, you know being my first game I, I i had a lot of fun with it yeah and how did you f find out about core i actually heard heard about it from a friend just word of mouth he oh was like gosh. hey you know like you you do all this art stuff all this digital creating like he's like i found this 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 thing right it's called core games like it's in <laughs> open alpha and he's like i think you should check it out like i think no you would way. really like it yeah, wow. and he, he sent me a couple videos, kind of his bait, I think, was like what he was really doing. Because he, ironically enough, I don't I don't think he's published a game. Uh, sh shout out to Nick. Nick, yeah, Nick uh, is the one who introduced me to Core, oh, but I don't think he's you, published Nick. anything here. Yeah, I don't think he's published anything, Boo, anything here, but I, ironically enough, yeah, he, he sent me these videos of, you know, his little character walking around oh. in a world, and I was like you like you made that like i'm getting on tonight like awesome. <laughs> and i did and then something you do with this game that i really love is um you have a fight the dev um kind of community event that you run so can you tell me a little bit more about that yeah so i normally spend a lot more time playing games versus making them to be honest of course like going into the the game jam stuff kind of we got away from that a little bit, but I, I really love streaming on Twitch. I like to do the art, you know, kit bashing mm -hmm. on Twitch. And of course, I love playing games on Twitch and I wanted to play mine. Um, and it started off really with my buddies, a couple of them uh, like Hammer Eye Black. He's he's in uh, chat right now. Oh, nice. It started off with just me and him like sort of running around in the alpha, just like fighting each other. And um I, I loved it because I'm a trash talker when I game, right? I, I love talking trash. I love, you know, going back and forth with people, whether it's like voice chat or, you know, the in-game chat, right? Little gotchas and, hey, oh my gosh. Trash stick, talk stick on that, right? Yeah, you know, stick with that and eat it and, you know, all the fun, the fun <laughs> little things that come from, from games. And even, uh, even when this game was just in, in like its white box form, playing with my friends i got those reactions and we had that wow. like that trash talk going and i was like this is like this is it like i'm i'm gonna play this on stream and um okay and do you have any uh trash talk tips for <clears throat> perhaps someone like myself who it does not oh. come uh naturally to 
I, it's it's all you, you just gotta live in somebody's head rent free oh, you know oh my God. and and a big part of it a big part of it is uh is getting your teammates on board oh I actually the, yeah so the best part of of trash talking is is when your teammates are on fire and you don't actually have to do anything you, your, your teammates go crazy wow. you, do, you do the trash talking <laughs> for them and that's 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 one of the best things i learned that playing sports back in the day um i had Play, played basketball and i have teammates now that are playing in the nba oh. playing professionally overseas and and i figured i learned early on that it was it was very fun to uh to sort of let them go crazy and and Gosh. sit back and, so and do the talking for them this whole time i thought i had to be exceedingly good to trash talk someone but you're just telling me i can let uh my yeah, team you, carry me and i can just be as obnoxious as i want and you, that's even better you, yeah, you can Ugh. just be the mouth, exactly. <laughs> I don't have to walk the walk, I just talk the talk. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> Fleshy. Uh, same question, and by same question I mean let's backtrack to mm -hmm. when I asked Doc about what made you want to create games? What got you into making games? So, I think I can remember the exact moment. Oh my uh, gosh. Let's see, I can't remember if it was 5th or 6th grade. I got a JavaScript, an intro to JavaScript programming book. Um, I think it was from my aunt. So I started looking over that uh, and learning how to use JavaScript and HTML. And at some point I realized, um, oh, I can start making games with this. Fleshy, how long was, was it like days or was it hours or like months when you were like sort of learning that code initially before you were like, Wait, I can use this to make games. Like, how long did that realization take to kick in? Where you were just like, day. Because um, at first, <laughs> one I day. Was like, oh. Yeah, I was like, um, I was thinking of the like the hackers that you see in movies. Like, cool, I can learn how to code. I can do this. Um, and then at some point, I realized that security and software development are two different things. But <laughs> nonetheless, um, uh, I, like... I was looking through the yeah. <laughs> I was looking through the book and I was seeing examples. I think the first one they had was Pong. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll try this. This mm. looks like fun. So, and then, so how did you guys find each other? Was that through the core community? Yeah, just through like core discord, basically. Um, nice. Oh yeah, that, that was basically it. I think, yeah, the first time I heard of you, Doug Fee, was when you reached out for the core invitation on Game Jam. Yeah. Whoa. It's like, hey, are you? Uh, we, I, I reached out to Fleshy. Honestly, I, I think anyone who's in the core Discord like knows who Fleshy is. Especially <laughs> if you've ever asked for help on anything, or if you've been curious about something, because Fleshy's like the one who I, I feel like ninety percent of the time figures it out. Um, and so I, I reached out to him, thinking like, oh, he's he's for sure gonna be, you know, like on somebody's team. Um, he's gonna be, you know probably jam-packed and uh <laughs> and he wasn't he it was, was meant to yeah, be yeah he was yeah he was he he was like oh yeah I'm, I'm down to help like you know talk talk to me like let's let's kick the idea back and forth and then uh lo and lo and behold did little did he understand he was going to program the entire invitational game oh, jam at that time i guess God. but uh, uh cheers cheers <laughs> to him for for sticking with us with us crazy artists and and helping us get it done oh my goodness oh this is a question for both of you um what games did you play growing up like doc you said uh experiencing games as a player was what made you want to create games um what games kind of were you most excited about and most uh, were most inspirational, I should say? I grew up with the N64. That was my first console. That was my my baby. My grandparents got it for me for Christmas Aww. after my parents told me this is like not a video game house, you oh, know? Suck my it, parents! did it anyways. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were super solid. Um, so I grew up on all the, you know, Mario games, the racing, you know, Mario Kart mario party everything mario i i loved all that stuff um and then i moved on to actually like the flash games was kind of oh. the next step for me like addictinggames.com miniclip.com oh yes. those those sort of sites where those games were i spent a lot of time playing those um before i got into consoles once once i got into consoles and pcs i started playing shooting games started uh playing open world games you know runescape 
stuff yes. like that. A, a lot of those games were, were really big for me. I, I still play old school RuneScape, RuneScape on stream, actually. Um, that game's still around after I think it's about as old as me now. Gosh, but, um, I freaking love RuneScape. Yeah, a lot of RuneScape, um, Skyrim, Fall, mm. the Fallout games were really big for me. I love those. That was like, I think the Fallout games are probably my favorite games and also the games that I've spent the most time playing. Just the, the post-apocalyptic shooting open world game kind of hits every part of what I want in a game for me, so. Oh my gosh, I have to say, uh, Fallout was an inspiration for me as well, so. I feel like we have a very similar story to game dev, Doc, because you're you're Absolutely. a 2D artist. I was a 2D artist. Core was like the first engine I really experimented with. Core was the first engine you really experimented with. We're twinsies. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And so this is the second map for Doc's deathmatch. Any maps uh, in progress? There are actually two other maps that are completely finished out. They're not in the live version of the game yet. I have to do a little bit of like condensing and making sure things are in the right context but the art form is done i'll be doing a devlog on youtube later this week actually showcasing oh, awesome. the next two maps yeah so be on the lookout for those everyone of course <laughs> but and so i'm noticing here um i feel like you are drawn to using a lot of uh colors in your game how do you plan out the visual style uh, I am. um yeah yeah, I, th I think for me, I, I approach it a lot like painting, to be honest. And I think there's probably some game dev people that would like disagree with part of how I work. But um, I think it's it's one of those things where, you know, different artists thinking differently is what makes, you know, different paintings or different games very special. Mm -hmm. And I really I, I just treat like the 3D uh, core editor the same way as I treat a like a paint palette so the first thing i normally do is grab a bunch of objects and just find materials and colors for them that i like so on this map it was like i wanted the outer walls to look like they were giant chunks of sea glass oh. and i actually used it's like the transparent bubble glass material um that's what i used for for those outer walls so i kind of put those in first and then just filled in from there um nice. but yeah I, I love color i think like there's a lot of people that make like dark and spooky games. There's tons of people that make um, monotone games, all, like all sorts of stuff. I I like to be the I like to be the color person. You know, it's it's the art that I like to make. Um, it's it's the games that I like to make. So awesome. I think that for me, it just it just carries over from from painting into essentially like a different medium at this point. That's wonderful. The game you made for the Core Games Invitational Game Jam, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, it was a game jam where we were like, uh, it's invite only. It was limited to just 50 teams. You had to apply. Um, it was really competitive. Uh, and it was originally, I think, 100 twenty thousand dollars but then at the end we were like <laughs> that's so little ended up money being a little bit closer to 200 i think in, in yeah, the end. yeah it ended up being i think the prize pool was 170k so this was a one month long game jam uh very intense uh, talk can you if at all possible sum up what it was like going from i have made my first game ever to i am competing in probably the most intense like high stakes game jam ever yeah so i we actually we actually went from i went from doc's deathmatch to the garden of the lost lands mm -hmm. which was the the lost and found game jam mm -hmm. um so that that was a two-day jam or, th or three-day jam i think uh, those of us a on little more got reasonable. like a, a little yeah like a little bit uh a little bit of a head start so it was like a two or three day jam um and so I went from Doc's Deathmatch to that, which was, it It didn't It didn't really seem that different, right? Like we were moving really, really fast, mm -hmm. but it, it worked well. And then to go from that to the core invitational was very, very, very intense. Um, like a, a month long, 
a month long basically straight of of just working on one game was was really intense um and i think i think for me personally like being newer to the game space it was sort of a baptism by fire sort of God, experience truly. right where it was like yeah there there wasn't really any time to like I, I guess like learn a whole lot of new things. It was I was like simultaneously building and and learning at the same time, right? And as long as I've been doing digital art on Photoshop, like Adobe stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I I save my work in Photoshop every thirty seconds, yes. right? And and I I'm one of those people that learned the very very hard way during the Invitational Jam that saving your work in oh, video games is also no. very important um yeah so we and and you know we had like i said it, it was a really intense experience we this whole game that you see before you like the terrain and everything we actually had this terrain essentially finished um i guess like two weeks into the game jam and then just kind of fudged some stuff up with with saving and and ran into a little issue and we actually had to rebuild the entire terrain from scratch about two and a half weeks into the jam so it was yeah there's there's like lo lots of lessons were learned on the fly <laughs> i guess you could say how do you um, but yeah real real baptism by fire <laughs> how do you stay motivated that it's just like the worst feeling having to redo something you literally struggled to like put into the yeah, world. Yeah, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I think I think for for me personally, like the only reason I was able to like redo basically redo our whole map was because we had a team. Oh, right. We had we had those other people, and it it became like you know. Fleshy was working really hard on our robot system and, you know, I had built gun models for him and he had implemented those so players could use them, right? And we had come so far that it was like, a, hey, we can't, like, we can't let this drop now, right? We can't let it fail now. We're not giving up. Um, but like Noob Dad Gamer, he was, he was kind of the one in the corner pushing me with, uh, hey, like, you know, let me know what you need. Like, uh, you you built all this stuff. There's going to be stuff you don't want to rebuild. So, like, send it to me and I'll build it this time, right? And he mm -hmm. took on a lot of a lot of building stuff the second time around. Um, and it was just a real team effort was, I would say, what, what was able to get us through. By the way, can we just appreciate this menu? I freaking love how you guys designed this. Um, was there any inspiration or... Um, that was actually uh insert yourself did the menu he oh knocked God. it out of the park absolutely killed it and that was actually a really cool i really cool from my perspective at least um because i did just a, a really simple mock-up of of the menu in adobe illustrator actually mm -hmm. and then oh. insert basically like took my adobe illustrator picture and like remade it in core and of course made it made it functional with you know how it spins out and sort of activates but um yeah that was that was insert that, that did the work on that fin okay wait i definitely need to reload <laughs> pro tip there we go okay so <laughs> can we talk about the battle system here because i think this is really fantastic i love how you've kind of um created this um area where the battles are kind of like cordoned off from the rest of the map um can you explain a little bit of like the design process and your thoughts behind creating this particular uh system um doc that's, do you want to handle yeah, that i can handle that i i can kind of speak i guess like our our initial worry with like wanting to fill a game with robots or npcs was like hey players can kind of force a bunch of them to pop up um and that was I guess Fleshy can take it from here because he sort of built and engineered this whole system to work uh, work around that. Yeah, so um, this idea was kind of brought up out of necessity. <laughs> uh, we realized, um, like early on, I realized I can only handle spawning like two, maybe three robots max mm -hmm. at once in a server instance. So I was like, okay, I need to come up with a nice way that players won't really notice where we can cordon them off in areas Whoa. that will also fit the aesthetic. 
um, and that led us to the like force fields that pop up. And I really like it because um, uh -huh. from a balancing perspective, it made it a lot easier to stop players from sort of like cheesing the robots and like running away and then running back in. Wow, I love that was originally a solution to a technical problem you had, but I think as we were talking um, before the stream, game design is really just kind of, uh, I guess, I don't want to say tricking the player because it feels mean, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's presenting the game in a way that is most enjoyable to the player. And <laughs> sometimes I think I don't... all. Yeah, I think all art, like when you really think about it, all art is made to like fool people in exactly. some sort of way, right? Like it, it is, that's, it's a good way to put it. It sounds really sinister when you say it, but like, you know, like makeup is made to help cover blemishes, right? And like paintings are, are made to, you know, make Present you feel a idea? certain sort of exactly. way or yeah, or make you oh. think about something, right? So it's, I mean, all art is, is really made to... <laughs> you know deal with people in in some sort of way gosh it's so game devs are tricking you but we're doing we're doing it to make you have out fun. of love though. exactly yeah, out of love like, exactly yeah. oh you man. want this yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> um let's see and then uh do you have any advice for like aspiring game designers uh, i feel like you would be the perfect person to really um Take advice from, I should say, uh, because you were so recently a new game designer yourself. Yeah, I think, I really think no matter what art field you want to get into, right? Like if you want to draw, if you want to paint, if you want to create video games, if you want to write stories, be a singer, be an actor, right? Like no matter what it is in the creative field, you get to a point where you just have to do it, right? And that, that may sound like, kind of weird or sound simpler like I'm simplifying the issue but there's a lot of people who spend a lot of time thinking about things and then they they never really get around to starting something or, or doing it um and core is really like a great place to I, I think probably the best place to just start doing game design or doing game development right like you can publish a game in minutes you can get something out that's you know you can test, you can play with your buddies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it gets, it gets to a point where you just have to start it and you have to realize that, you know, your first creation isn't going to be great. It's not going to be perfect, but that's part of art, right? No artist ever creates something saying, oh, I hope this, I like, I, I never go into a painting saying, oh, I hope this painting is worse than my last one. <laughs> Right. Like it's it's all about like, hey, I want uh -huh. each, each painting that I do. I, I hope it gets better. Right. I want to learn more. I want to level up. I want to grow as an artist. Um, and Core's is core is really a great place to, to do that, especially especially with the community. It's I, I think that's that's second to none. Awesome. Wow. I love that. I think it's when I realized um something similar where everyone started out knowing nothing about game design because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just not something humans are born knowing and that fact was actually very comforting to me because I was like oh I'm starting exactly where everyone else has started yeah Bill Gates didn't know anything about software oh at one point God. in his life and, <laughs> you know I mean shoot yeah. e Elon Musk own is is like has spacex and right like the crazy <laughs> rocket ship company like five years ago all the biggest astronauts in the world were telling him you can't build rockets wow. and like go to the like you can't do that you you don't know what you're doing and he just went and learned like and there's there's something like really awesome to be said for that right is like anybody really can you can especially with as tools get better and better like i said I, th I think core is one of the best creative tools i've ever found um and i've been doing digital art for like i said about a decade like i've been using photoshop since before it was photoshop right it was it, was, it used to be called elements um, <laughs> that's, that's what i did like digital art on way way back so um it's all you know it, everyone like you said starts starts off knowing nothing at some point so you just you get to a point where you just got to jump in there and, and try something out you know give it a go i think core is also probably a great place to reach out to people to try to learn from them too um you know like if if you see people that 
you consider like knowledgeable on something core is again probably one of the best creative places to reach out to those people because a lot of them are willing to share information or share knowledge or at least talk to you you know and get start to give you some advice Awesome. Oh, I love that you think our community is very uh, friendly and welcoming because we've worked hard to make it that way. Um, yeah, absolutely. Is there any part of this game you are like, I am, this is the thing I am most proud of, or anything that you were like, I did not think I would be able to do this, and yet? Abilities. Um, <laughs> abilities. <laughs> the, the ability system for Fleshy. Tell me more, Fleshy. <laughs> um, the ability, oh, you can press Q and E for some of the abilities. Oh, I just gosh, you had thank you. Them. Oh, okay. Um, and there's a shop in the main area when you respawn. Um, <gasps> but the abilities and modifiers were kind of a pain because each one represented its own like unique challenge. Uh, let's see, there's like the jetpack, the dash, a uh, few different like pylons for healing, a turret that you can spawn, a shield. So um, just like with the weapons on the robot, it, it, it was a really daunting task because each of them had to be connected to the player. And I couldn't really just copy and paste stuff because they uh. had to function independently. Uh, and that was the main challenge for me. And it was like kind of where like, can I get in all of this stuff that I want to add uh, before the game jam finishes? And I think we mostly completed that goal. I, I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah, we, and we oh, have awesome. It has been <laughs> um, a saving grace for all of this. <laughs> cool. Um, and then, Doc, same question. Um, man, really, I, I think for me, like, I was looking big picture a lot of a lot of the project mm -hmm. so i'm i'm like very proud of the big picture right like we have an awesome world i i think there's like there's not anything else that i've seen in core that that looks like the world looks this way um and and i'm i'm really proud of that but i i i think like the one individual thing is the robots for me um that that was sort of like the culmination of like everything i wanted um in 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 like the art design side of things i guess was to design something really cool that i thought was cool that the team thought was cool and then watch fleshy bring it to life right <laughs> so i i just designed like the robot head the legs stuff like that he was the one who sort of modeled it up and got it to work and function so to see that actually like the creature of the robot sort of come to life like that was extremely, extremely special for me. Oh. Doc, I can't express how excited I was when you sent me the um, the parts, when you pushed the Git repo. I remember oh, yeah. like all the different robot parts, and I was like, oh my god, there's so many different parts I can use. Yeah, that, robots that, working. that was that was like, I think the, the really fun part of it for me. Um, of course, like I said, like seeing the whole project come together from everyone at the end, like, yo, we really like made a game in a week and it's, you know, like we pushed the, the core engine to its limit, right? Like we, we broke it working on our terrain at one point and we came back and finished the game like that. That was, that was, I was really proud of, of all of that and how our team sort of reacted and pulled through. But yeah, seeing the, the robots come to life was so special because um, we saw them in, in sort of like a white box form for a really long time uh, gosh so the yeah. mech stream was, was incredibly exciting for you today yeah it was the, we were we were sort of salivating over those pieces <laughs> like hey can we have them early please like because <laughs> we have ideas of course we we've got stuff that we're going to update um in this game and such but uh yeah seeing seeing the mech pieces we were me me and noob dad gamer especially we were drooling over those um we've actually we've got a few other like creatures and and little monsters planned for the world oh nice um so you might yeah you might see we we might like hold off on them a little bit and see if we can get some of those pieces in the mix for them so we're really excited about that so uh who worked on this game with you so it was you fleshy noob dad gamer mhm mm so the yeah the, the three of us were the oh. main team we we also had uh, so it was uh myself fleshy overlord noob dad gamer we had insert yourself did nice. the menu for us we had kid egg who is um 
I think people may know his Suki Night Market game yes. from the city building jam, right? Very or from, yeah, from the building jam. Yeah, he he actually helped us. Um, like nice. if, if you look at the map, our our world is massive. It's actually about as big as Core will allow. Ooh. So if you head over to some of the other like towns and outposts <gasps> okay. on the map, yes, let's go. You'll to... see some of, I I. The stacks is probably the one that I would recommend going oh, yeah. to. Oh yeah, okay. And we have some really cool builds there from Egg and Noob Dad Gamer um, that that are really awesome, I think. But yeah, we we got got a, a Egg to help us out. Um, Naya Alchemy as well. She's Naya's one oh. of my my favorite artists in the community yes. to work with. He was. Uh, she also worked with with us on the Garden of the Lost Lands. Uh, for the Lost and Found jam, she worked with us on that one. Um, so it was kind of you know we we had some some really helpful people from the community like step up and and help us you know. So how do you uh start to even organize that many people working on a project this big? Do you have like design documents or Trello or Jira? Just... Uh, we. We we didn't really use Trello. We we thought about it, um, but it it's definitely difficult to get like schedules lined up and get everyone organized. Um, I think I I was really lucky from like the art standpoint, kind of like managing all of that again, like all of the artists <laughs> that that mm -hmm. I had helped. Like the, these are like the top people in the community, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Um, so it was it was like they're they're all pros, right? I kind of told them like, Hey, I, I need this. I need that. And that stuff got to me first. And then it was like, okay, well now what do you want? Right. Is there anything you, you kind of need, like, what can you use? Um, and they, they were super pros about handling that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think, I think like the, the organization of it is, is definitely a little challenging, right? Making mm -hmm. sure like the scheduling lines up and everything. And then of course, a month long game jam oh. is, is very intense, right? Like that's a, yeah. it's a lot of time to commit to and a, and a lot of time to try to, uh, to try to line up. We, we like full open honesty, we had some like scheduling conflicts with our team. And there were things that we wanted to get into the game mm -hmm. that we had to pull back on and oh. decide, hey, like we can't we can't do that, right? Like it, it's a timing thing. So and and some of those things we've even been able to get in. I think we've updated this game already like fifteen or twenty oh times. Oh my god. Since it's been released. Yeah, yeah we've been doing all wow. sorts of little hot fixes and, and things like that. So um What were the features that didn't make it in initially? Uh well, we have, I, I think, like, some of the big things, like, we have, like, three or four other, like, NPCs, creatures, to go hunting for out in the world. Ah. Um, that we just, we, we wanted to spend a little bit more time on the mechanics of them, so it felt a little bit different in combat, you know? Not just, like, you're shooting targets over and over again, so to speak, I guess. Um, so that, that was one of the things, and then... The uh, map the compass and the ui overhaul i think were yeah. the three big ones that we had and then we also added we added some like some higher level robots as well so yep. basically the further north you travel on the map the more dangerous it gets oh cool um so out like there's sort of like this orange line way off to the far north yes. right and if if you cross that line you actually end up in like no man's land and it's it's a free for all Ooh. PvP zone. Oh no. And all of all of the robots back there are level four. So they're they're pretty tough to kill. And it's really interesting because you sort of need help back there, but you have to trust that other players aren't gonna take you out too. It's kind of a Ooh. everyone needs to be in agreement out there. <laughs> Otherwise it can get a little sticky. So a little lawless, huh? Yeah. Ooh. I guess I'm wondering, how do you decide what needs to be tweaked or balanced? Are you kind of just going off your gut feelings? Are you listening to player feedback? Uh, what's happening there? I, I think it's a little bit of everything, actually. Hmm. Um, I like I th you run into you run into trouble if you listen to players too much. <laughs> okay, that's that, that, yeah. that's a fact. Like, there's been plenty of games that I like to play that have been ruined over the years because developers listen to like complaining players basically right 
um and you get you know a lot of games the the meta switch and stuff like that because because of that sort of stuff some people like that other people don't you know but i think listening to players is important but you don't want to build your entire game off of that idea at the same time so hmm. we take we take feedback from players very seriously and quite a few of the things that we've implemented into the game have come from player feedback like the magnetic uh, loot tool sort of oh, after nice. you kill a robot you the loot will just sort of get vacuumed up to your player it used to be where you had to pick it all up individually so that's like that's something that we've changed actually just in the last few days because we got player feedback where players were like, hey, I don't want to chase the loot like down a hill, right? Like that's <laughs> kind of a pain. So ah. we were like, okay, we'll give you like a, a little magnetic tool to sort of pick the loot up and everyone has that now. So I think it's important um, to sort of trust your instincts as a developer and then also listen to the players, right? And then... I think there's really no shortage as well for being a player yourself, right? You can't, if you're going to be a game developer, I think, I think one reason that a lot of AAA games and big budget games have big problems is some of the devs aren't players themselves, right? Like you think about Anthem was like this huge game that had hundreds of millions of dollars dumped into it. And now like the game's not even supported anymore. Right, like they they took that game off offline and said it was a bust, basically. And I think uh, I think like you you have to play your games, right? And if you can't, as a developer, if if you can't play your game, then that's a pretty good sign that other people might not be playing it as well, right? So exactly. there's definitely like you you want to listen to the players, not too much, but then if you completely ignore what players want, you're gonna be making a game that maybe no one yeah. really wants to play so it's 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 a fine balance in there for oh, sure definitely as i'm growing in my own game dev journey i'm beginning to discover i think the most valuable skill you could have as a dev is um empathy and that's empathy for the player experience and i wonder if you agree or disagree. yeah i think I think I think that's a, a road that actually goes both ways kind of, right? Like as as players, it's important that like you realize what devs do and what they go through and the work that they put in, right? And then as as devs, it's important to respect those players and also, you know, appreciate the time and sometimes even like the monetary investment that they make into the games that you're making, right? I would also add patience. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yes, definitely. Hey, yeah, yeah pa patience is in in any creative facet, any creative job or any creative uh, task. Patience will go a very very long way. <laughs> I'd say probably that that's probably one more for the coders than us kit yeah, bashers on core for sure. <laughs> but um, that that's a great creative rule to have. <laughs> And uh, what's next for this game? Are you guys planning on updating it? Are you guys working on another game? Yeah, I think uh, I I don't want to I don't want to let like too much out of the bag on on other games. Um, I oh. I know like Fleshy's Fleshy's been working on some stuff that's really cool. Ooh. I've been able to see it behind the scenes. Um, I I'm gonna do everything I can to help him with that one. I've got another quick fun game in the works right Ooh. that I'll, I'll probably need a an hour or two of help on but yeah we're, we're definitely going to keep developing this game um like i said there were there were quite a few things that we didn't get in here that we wanted to mm -hmm. um and in hindsight not putting some of it in the game probably saved us some time too like there oh was some gosh. stuff that is devs that we thought would be really cool and now that we've seen players play the game we're like yeah no one would care about that oh right like oh my gosh no like no one would no one would do anything with that so i think i think like we'll definitely want to add some more npcs in the future um clean clean some of that stuff up you know give give players something else to to fight against or battle against but we'll also be holding uh plenty of events like I'll, I'll be holding events on stream um for this game as well you know fight the devs and pvp sessions because like i said as soon as you get way out there to the north you cross that threshold and and it's a free-for-all out there so 
like trying to make my way up there just yeah. to <laughs> see what the fuss is about. Um, so speaking of like uh, fight the dev, so you have a Twitch and a Discord. And uh, if you guys are wondering where those are, again, that link tree that is now below Doc um, has all the information you need. Um, so I think you're really great at building a community around your game. Um, do you think that's required for like the modern indie dev? Do people like need the Discord or need the Twitch um, to get noticed and get attention? I don't. I don't think you need it. Um, I'm. I'm sort of. I, I think I'm sort of like in some people's eyes like a champion of social media, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm very active <laughs> across across all all the platforms that I'm on, right? right. Twitch, yeah. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I, I'm kind of all over the place. And but you do a great job of marketing this, I, yourself too. I will say, I see your post come you, up, and I'm you. like, oh my, like, that's such a good idea. The screenshot contest. I was like, what? That was a yeah. Oh. That was that was a fun one. Shout shout inspired. out to a uh, trash trash bird actually won that contest. Oh, yeah. And still needs to collect his prize. Ooh, trash <laughs> um, bird. But yeah, that, that was that was a fun contest. I I don't think that that stuff is necessary. I think it definitely helps. Um, I I will say this. I think I think there's a fair amount of game development people and a fair amount of you know programmers and artists alike who are very shy. Right. And that's that's OK. Like, it's OK to, you know, operate behind the scenes and, and sort of want to be like quiet and not want to put your face out there and, and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I think that's that's a great opportunity where, you know, some game devs don't be afraid to reach out to these streamers and these people that that do have communities and hit them up to, hey, you know, play play my game, see what you think. Right. Or, you know, hey, I'll, I'll play with you. I'll, I'll meet you for a voice chat on stream and, you know, we could play for a little bit or something like that, right? S almost similar to what we're doing now. Um, yeah. There's really, there's, yeah, there's nothing stopping us as, as indie developers from from doing this. And then again, if, if you're uncomfortable with it, there's there's plenty of people, even, even in the core community, there's so many people that like to stream on Twitch. Um, and it's it's a great idea to network with those people and, you know, ask them, Hey, like, what could you use help on for playing my game for an hour on stream one day? Right. Mm -hmm. There's, there's plenty of people who, you know, don't, don't want to stream their game live. They don't want to, you know, keep up with a, a discord community or, or whatever it is. And there's, there's definitely tons of ways to, to get that done, but yeah, definitely use, use the people in the community that are there because, if there's something you feel that you're a little weaker with, chances are someone else absolutely loves that part of the process, right? Wow. Yeah. Very well said. So let's, we're going to close out the stream. Um, but I think the question to end on, oh, this is going to be a tough one. So get uh, ready. The big one. The big one. Yeah. <sighs> All right how to phrase this what are your favorite core games that you didn't create yourself <laughs> that i didn't create myself okay yeah. my my absolute favorite one this is actually a really really easy question for me to answer Heck yeah. um, my absolute favorite one is nexus wars shout oh. out to mad ants that that game is i think it's so awesome it won the core invitational game jam and i i agree with that a hundred percent i think it was like the best game out there i love shooting games it's what i grew up playing I, I still play a ton of them now um and i've never played anything that mashed up that moba shooting experience quite like that um so that was that that's that is for sure my my all-time favorite game on core right now nexus wars um but i like oh man so so many games uh roll em. Enchant the Enchanted, um, the Enchanted Cottage is a game that Naya Alchemy made oh. that I really enjoy. Um, is that the one where it's think, like the magical uh, house and it's just like this incredibly? Um... It's, it's sort of like yeah, it's it's sort of like a little, it's like a little go explore game. Yes. Oh. Um. So so yeah, I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy Kingdom Fall was one of the first games that I played on Core. I thought it was really fun. Um. And that was sort of I was like. Oh wow! Like you can make something 
like this on chord like oh that was God. that was really cool to me um i i was i was actually a really big fan of a lot of the building jam games as well oh, nice. because those those showcased a lot of great art i think so again uh Amon Bufel's Kid Egg, there's the Ugh. Suki Night Market, Calthera the Unbreakable. Those are games that I really like. Um, just there's there's not really there's not really much gameplay there. McManical Cove is is probably oh, my favorite like God. world just to to be in and core, right? Like yes. there's there's some of these games, like there's not really a whole lot to do, but the environment is just that incredible, right? Oh like I'll, I'll get on just to walk around it for a few minutes. Then that's, that's really special. Um, the, the game quote unquote games are, you know, uh, that artistically like, impressive. Yeah. That was such a artist or creative answer. Cause you were just like, I like, there's no gameplay really, but gosh, don't you just want to explore the world? Ah, oh, yeah. wonderful. Those, yeah. There's, there's something special about a game when you, it's just a world experience like that in core, right? Like Calthera, mm -hmm. the unbreakable mm -hmm. mechanical cove. Th those are the two that come to mind for me right off the top, maybe falling water as well. That oh, was yeah. another one. Um, and those, those three games, it's like you, you sort of explore the world. And for me as sort of leaving dev mode and going back into player mode, I'm, I'm there like, man, I, I like, I want to play this. Like, I like I I want something to do in here. I want to build. I want to survive here. I want to you know fight something here. Whatever it is, and that's a shout out to those those creators for those games because that's a really special thing to accomplish. Um, it's sort of like music without words, right? There's oh, there's gosh. just tunes tunes that hit you right in the soul and give you the <laughs> chills, and that's the that's the video game equivalent of that to me right there. Oh, I love that. And gosh, I feel like you two are really like meant to find each other in the core community because you're both very excited about the mech and spaceship uh parts oh that's wonderful yeah, well i i can i can say you you guys should all be expecting to see some things from from our team go oh, as soon excellent. as we can get our hands on those pieces yeah oh. we'll, we'll be having some fun with those for sure uh, i can't wait for that update for you guys uh well doc and fleshy thank you so much for joining me and playing your games with me um this was so much fun and i man Thank you Doc, so much yeah, for having Yeah, I just us. can't yeah. express Thanks. with words how much I appreciate the fact that there are core creators in the community who want to come on our little channel and like talk about the things they do. It just uh, am eternally grateful for you guys. Um, of course. So we'll we'll, mm -hmm. we'll do it again. We'll do it again sometime if, if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. And yeah. by the way, guys, if you are like, hey, this Doc fellow sounds like he knows his stuff, and you'd like to check out his other things. Uh, this is uh, Linktree um, or linktr.ee slash docbdesign. You can also just Google his name and all of these things pop up too. Um, so go follow him on these. Uh, and uh, Fleshy, was there anything you wanted to plug for yourself? I mean, I guess I have like a My Projects page, but I don't have any merch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, follow Fleshy in spirit. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> or don't. Maybe that's creepy. Just <laughs> admire from leave, a distance. Leave fleshy folks. spirit alone. <laughs> leave fleshy leave alone. Leave spirit alone, all right? <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. And thanks, viewers, for watching. And we'll be back next week with another Core Creator Spotlight. Bye. Bye. Uh...